Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to talk about delegate an event. It's a very basic and fundamental concept in C Sharp programming language. So first in this video, I'm going to start explaining what is delegate and then write a class which is going to show some of the delegate feature and then talk about event and how delegates and events work together. So first let's discuss what is delegate. Delegate is a type in C Sharp. It represents a reference to a method like a function pointer. So most of the time when you hear about delegate, in a lot of places it will come up as delegate is a function pointer. But in C Sharp, delegate is essentially a type which represents reference to a particular method. That's why sometimes it is called it's like a function pointer because it points to a function. Delegate is declared with a list of parameters, zero or many, and a return type, which can be void. When a delegate is instantiated, we can map it with any method with compatible signature. So the method can be static or non-static. To call the underlying method for a particular delegate, we can use the invoke function on the delegate or we can just call it with the name of the delegate along with the open close braces signature. Once I show it, it's going to become much more clearer what I mean. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to create a new .NET Core console application. So in this project, first I'm going to create a new class and the class will be calculator for example and inside of the class I'm going to create a new delegate type so I'm going to say the return of this delegate let's say is integer and the name is going to be calculate and then let's say it takes a single parameter And next, I can create a public method, which again returns integer. And it is execute. And this method is a method which takes this delegate I declared as a parameter and an integer as the second parameter. And inside of this function, I'm just going to return executing the delegate with the incoming input. So as you can see, as I just mentioned earlier that we can invoke the delegate using the delegate name, open close brace parameter, or we can also do the invoke. So right now I'm just going to have open close. That's how delegate is going to be called. Now if we want to use this inside of program, first let's create a static function here, which has the same signature as the delegate, which is static int square. And it's just going to return input times input and now inside here what we can do is we can create a new instance of the type that we declared and then we can do see the execute method now we want to pass a delegate calculator dot calculate to this execute method so there are two ways of doing it the first way is we can say calculator dot calculate is equal to square. So we essentially declare the calculate and point it to the square function and then we can call calculator dot execute and we can pass calc and five as a parameter and and in the console dot output you can say we can do that 
So now one thing, as you can see, this is a very important point, is that though the delegate is declared as a public member of this type, it cannot be accessed through the instance, unlike any other public member. Because delegate is a type and it is a little bit different than normal types, it behaves like as if you declare an inner class. When you declare an inner class, it doesn't become a member of the class. Meaning you cannot do, so if I declare a If I declare like this, I cannot come here and say calculator instance dot test. I have to do calculator dot test. Similarly, the delegate also is accessed, can be accessed using the class name. It's more like an inner type than a instance member. This is something I wanted to clarify. So hence, when we access it, we cannot access it through the instance because it's not an instance member. It's an inner type, hence we can access it through this. So this is how we can call. So this is one way of calling the delegate. So now if I run this, I should see five as the response. Let me give a console.read line so that we can see the output. And we can see that the response is 25, which is five times five as expected. The other way of calling or other way of passing this is instead of declaring it and associating it with square, we can just pass square here. And we don't need this. This will behave the same as before. And in my experience, delegates are mainly used as callback functions or along with events. So that, that's what delegate is. And I think it gives you a fair enough idea of what delegates are. The other interesting thing with delegate is, apart from the invoke method, you can see there are a couple of method, begin invoke and end invoke. The begin invoke and end invoke can be used along with the delegate to make the delegate asynchronous. So you can use begin invoke, you get a I async result, and then you can use the async result in the async callback function to call the end invoke and get the response. This is another thing you can do, but we don't use it anymore because it is not needed since async await has been introduced. But in earlier days, begin invoke and end invoke of delegate was pretty popular. I'm not going to dive into it, I just wanted to show. The next thing we are going to talk about action and funk. The delegate discussion is not complete if we don't discuss action and funk. These are the out of box delegate provided by C sharp so that we don't have to create our own delegate almost ever. So in terms of delegate, if you think about it at a high level, there are only two types of delegates which are possible. One type is a delegate that returns a type, takes a bunch of parameter or no parameter. And the other type of delegate is the one that returns nothing and takes a bunch of parameter or no parameter. That part is common, but one returns something and one doesn't return anything. And that's what action and funk is all about. Funk is a delegate which returns something and it can take up to 16 possible parameter combination. So it can be funk of t result, in which case it's not taking any parameter, or it can be funk of t, t result, funk of t1, t2, t result, and up till funk of t1, t2, t16, t result. That's funk, which is equivalent to a delegate that returns. And then we have action. An action is a delegate that returns void or doesn't return anything, but takes a bunch of parameter. So for action, the parameter can be, again, it can be from zero. So not taking any parameter, or it can be action of t, action of t1, t2, and then action of t1, t2, t3, dot, 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 t16. So let's take a look at the action and func delegates, the out of box delegate. So if we take this example in the calculator, we can completely replace this with a func of int int. It takes an input as an int and return a output of int. And here nothing changes. So it is still square because it's take a func of int int. And if we run this, it is just going to work as expected. 
Now, if we want to use along with func and action, what we can do is, as I said, action is also a delegate. So we can either declare something like public delegate void, let's say print, which takes which takes an input and here we can pass the this can be one parameter and this one here it can So it can use the delegate to print and then finally return and we can come out here and at this point in time for the second delegate we can simply pass console.write and 5 and we don't need this and now if we run this it is just going to print out and come out and then what we can do is instead of this delegate that we created we can just take here action of int and then we come here run it it should behave exactly the same way so that's about func and action and since func and actions are introduced i don't see a reason for ever creating your own delegate because every possible combination is kind of available but the delegate discussion is incomplete without lambda so where does exactly lambda fit in so for that let's first understand what is lambda lambda expression is used to create an anonymous function so it is nothing but an anonymous function but anonymous function in itself is kind of useless anonymous function is usually used with a delegate or to represent a delegate so any delegate type can be represented with a lambda expression the parameter and return type of course has to match Lambda can be async. This is not related to this discussion, but just to mention that Lambda can be async or non-async. So now here, if we have to use Lambda expression, instead of square, we can pass an anonymous type. So we can do this. That's all. And we can get rid of this square. Now, if I run this, this is going to give the same response of 25. So it's the exact same thing. It's just that instead of declaring a function, you just provide an anonymous function. And your anonymous function will be called back when you need. So that's essentially where the lambda fits in in the whole discussion of delegate. Is that the delegate representation usually ends up being a lambda. I don't remember last when I used a function declaration for a delegate. Almost always we end up using lambda expression when it comes to declaring a delegate. And the final thing for this discussion is event. So events, as we all know, is nothing but something that we trigger to invoke a function. The event keyword is used to declare an event in C-sharp. And unlike delegate, which becomes like an enclosed type, event is treated as an instance member. And that, I think, is a fundamental difference and an event is always associated with the delegate. When an event is read, the delegate is called back. That's what essentially happens. When you rise an event, you are basically invoking the delegate. The delegate associated with an event usually have two parameters as a standard practice. This is not mandatory, but as a best practice, the delegate associated to event always has two parameters. The first parameter is an object representing the instance that raised the event. And second parameter is a type representing event arguments. So if I have to show this, let's go back here. Now first let's create an event argument. So I'm going to go create a new class and we can say calculator event args. And usually the naming convention for event argument suffixes with event args. 
and I'm just going to give name that's it and now we can go into calculator and here we can declare an event so we can say public event and for event we need a delegate now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the action delegate with object as the first type and then the calculator event args as the next type and then here I'm going to have the name of the delegate called calculate that's it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a public void raise event and in the raise event what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass a name and here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say calculate if it is instantiated then invoke and the invoke is as you can see the event dot invoke is nothing but invoking the delegate itself because the type of the event is nothing but the delegate so we're going to invoke and here as you can see the first parameter is the object which is raising the event in our case it is going to be this the calculator and the second parameter is going to be new of event dogs and for the name we can pass the incoming name so in this case what we can do is so now we can go here back to the program and then here what we can do is we can do calculator dot calculate and to attach a delegate we use the plus equal to and this there are two options here also either we can declare a delegate like calculate this and here we can say so dot right line of arcs to dot name and then here we can raise the event calling the raise event and passing a name so that's one option and I'm going to show this first now remember one thing usually the raising of event does not happen at the place where the subscription happens because it would not make much sense right so usually the calculator might be uh, event pass if we want to call it that way which has both publish and subscribe and someone will take the instance and publish and someone else will subscribe to get a call back so this way we can have two component decoupled from each other where one raises event another one listens to an event and you can create an in-memory event bus inside of a type using just plain simple events so now that we have that what we can do is if I run this application now I should see the test name showing up after 25 and then I'm going to show you the usual way we use this we normally use lambda in this case Now if I run this application, I should see the exact same result as before. That's it. So that's all I wanted to cover today. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, these are extremely basic concepts, but this is a very important concept for someone who is new developer to C Sharp. Hence, I thought I'll just cover this couple of topics. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, if you think you are going to get value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.